So let's explain how tinnitus can sound different for each individual. Sometimes it can sound like ringing, other times buzzing, roaring, hissing, white noise, static, pulsing. There's many different ways to hear tinnitus. So let's get into it. Watch this video until the end because I'll explain how describing the correct sound of your tinnitus can sometimes tell your doctor whether they can actually treat it and make it go away. This is pure tinnitus. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson. I'm an audiologist and tinnitus specialist. So there's some basic differences for you to know about tinnitus. Number one is that the perceived volume can be much different. Someone can perceive it as very loud. Someone else can perceive it as soft. Another difference is the actual pitch or the quality of the sound. Someone might hear it at 10,000 hertz. That's the frequency, the pitch. Someone else might hear it around 4,000 or 6,000 hertz. So there's a big variance there in how it affects your ear, eventually up into your brain. We have another of our videos that talks about exactly how to match Match the pitch of your tinnitus so check out the info below to find that video the most important difference that tinnitus can have is how it affects you so what this means is that your quality of life will be differently affected than someone else we have a test where we can measure the actual sensation level or loudness of the tinnitus that someone experiences comparing the tinnitus level to their threshold for that certain frequency and oftentimes it's less than 10 decibels oftentimes less than five decibels so two people with the same sensation level of tinnitus someone can report it as significantly affecting their life and someone else can report it as mildly affecting their life i'm an audiologist i work as a hearing doctor i see it all the time where someone comes in and they report very slight tinnitus but they report that it's significantly affecting their quality of life for some people the tinnitus can be a neutral experience yeah it's there but i don't really pay much attention to it so what uh, for other people it can be bothersome i don't like it and i it, it annoys me what is that for a small section of people it can be very bothersome where it's causing depression anxiety significant stress and it's stopping them from doing the things that they love is that affecting you let us know in the comments below there's some limitations to your daily life that tinnitus can cause some common experiences can be anything that's involving quiet so number one can be reading having a hard time reading because you're hearing the ringing in your ears number two can be general peace and quiet like going out in your backyard or on your deck and how typically you would hear birds you'd be nice and quiet but now with tinnitus you can't hear anything except the ringing in your ears so that is a way that it takes you away from the things you love another big reason how tinnitus can affect you is if it causes you to have bad sleep if I sleep bad tonight, tomorrow is not gonna be so good. Finally, communicating with family and friends. If you have ringing in your ears and you're having a hard time actually hearing the people you're talking with because of how distracting and loud the tinnitus is in your ears, then that's really affecting your quality of life. So if you can describe your tinnitus very well to your audiologist or your doctor or your ear, nose, throat physician, that could potentially lead to us helping you treat it. Now, there are certain cases where the ringing in your ears is from a medical cause that can be treatable or cured. And this is usually relating to medication or surgery. For nine out of 10 cases of tinnitus, that's not the case. If you have ringing in your ears that slowly progressed gradually over time, equal in both ears, that's likely related to a problem in your inner ear, the cochlea, and there's no cure or surgery to make that go away. Giving the correct description of tinnitus can lead to a possible treatment. One good example of this could be low frequency or roaring tinnitus. That could be related to Meniere's disease. Another example is unilateral high-pitched tinnitus. What that means is that you have tinnitus only on one ear and it's high pitch. That might be related to a vestibular schwannoma, also called acoustic neuroma, which is a growth on your auditory nerve. And another sound in your ear that might be related to a medical condition would be feeling like you have water in your ear or hearing some whooshing sound. That might be related to an ear infection or having fluid behind your eardrum. Finally, if you have tinnitus that sounds like a heartbeat or a pulsing sensation, that could be related to a cardiovascular problem and you could possibly get that treated as well. So clearly there's many different types of tinnitus and getting the right diagnosis from the right specialist could potentially improve your problem. And it's also good to know that whatever kind of tinnitus you have is going to affect your life differently than someone else. Please let us know in the comment below what kind of tinnitus you have and how it's affecting your life right now, this week. Give us a thumbs up below on this video because if you don't, YouTube doesn't recommend our video to anyone else. Press that red subscribe button to get our new videos coming out every single week. And tap that notification bell so YouTube sends you an alert when our new video comes out. Remember to take your journey one step at a time.